Both of these pieces are entirely made out of plywood and pocket hole together with laminated tops. So the first thing I had to do was break down all the plywood and drill a lot of pocket holes. Now for the general dimensions of these, you can check out the blog article at the link in the description. I always put more information there than is in the videos. Now, my wife wanted the storage unit to have a clipped corner, so I used what will be the side piece to mark where to cut and then went to the miter saw to clip the corners on the shelves, top and bottom. I found that the easiest way to build pocket hole projects like this is upside down because you want the pocket holes to be on the bottom so they're not visible and going upside down keeps you from getting in your way as you build. I first screwed the sides into the top and then used the shelves to lay out where the middle support should go and screwed them into the top. Then I used spacers to hold my shelves in place and keep them level while I screwed them in. You'll notice that the middle supports are shorter than the sides. This is so the bottom will be raised off the floor and only the sides will be on the floor. That'll help keep everything stable, because if the entire bottom was on the floor and the floor was uneven at all, then the shelves would be really rocky. To attach the bottom, I use pocket holes into the sides because they won't be seen, and then I mark where the middle supports run along the bottom and just pilot hole and screw right up into them. With the storage unit done, I move on to the desk, again building upside down. I start with the cubbies and shelves, and then I move to the other side and the braces. Now the desk is going to have a recess for a sewing machine, so I build out a box that will get mounted underneath it, but I make it the full width so that way it will also reinforce the top. So I was starting to paint and realized I made a big mistake. So let me show you what I'm trying to do to fix it. So this was the back and this was the front. These cubbies are supposed to be on the right, but they're on the left. So I'm moving the back up to the front. So I took these braces off and I moved them up here, took out the shelves. I'm gonna move the back support to the new back, put the shelves back in. This is the cubby that the sewing machine's gonna sit in and I'll put it, I need to scoot it back to the new front and then everything will be uh, dandy again. These will mostly be used for sewing and scrapbooking so I laminate some melamine onto the top of these so they'll have a nice smooth surface. And the key is to get plenty of clamps and weight on it to get a good glue bond. After the glue dries, I flesh cut the edges with the pattern bit in the router, but first I tape off all the edges to try to minimize tear out. This didn't work as well as I hoped, but I think it did help some. I also need to cut out the hole for the sewing machine. I kind of go at this a little caveman style, but it worked. 
So the only thing left at this point is some touch-up paint and then to take these upstairs. I'd like to highlight my buddy Doug over at DN Handcrafted. He puts out amazing videos of really interesting projects on his channel, and right now he's doing a series on how to model woodworking projects in Fusion 360. So if that's something that interests you, for sure go check him out. And if you have any recommendations on who to follow, please leave me a comment and let me know. this or subscribing.